Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm going to tackle another repair. My son's combination microwave and hood vent recently started tripping its breaker whenever it was plugged in. Since the unit is only about five years old, I thought I would try to resurrect it before it became more landfill fodder. So why don't you join me as we troubleshoot and hopefully repair this Frigidaire FFMV164 LSA microwave oven. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Today we're working with high voltage electrical power and microwaves. It's important to keep the microwave emissions as designed. This means the alignment of the doors and the integrity of the cooking envelope must be maintained. Don't operate the microwave with the door open or if there's any damage to the unit. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now, let's get started. My son's microwave started tripping the breaker as soon as it was plugged in. He immediately unplugged it and changed the breaker thinking the breaker was going bad. However, the oven also tripped the new breaker, so he asked me to look at it to see if it was worth saving. I'm looking at it here in my garage because, frankly, I don't feel like carrying it downstairs to the electronic shop. First, let's get familiar with the schematic. The power enters a filter that has a fuse. This 20 amp fuse hasn't blown yet, indicating the housebreaker quickly took care of the overload. After the filter, the hot and neutral rails feed the control board, the vent fan, the hood lights, and the oven lights. The high voltage transformer that powers the magnetron tube is connected to the hot rails through the primary door interlock switch. This switch opens when the door is open, preventing the magnetron tube from operating unless the door is closed. The second interlock switch is the monitor switch, which is installed across the primary leads of the high voltage transformer for the magnetron. This switch closes when the door is open, bypassing the magnetron circuit if the door is not closed. The third inlock switch is called the door sense switch and tells the control board whether the door is open or closed. If the door isn't closed, the control board won't even try to start the magnetron. Control of the magnetron circuit is supplied by a large power relay on the control board. Power for the oven lights, the internal cooling fan, and the turntable are supplied by the smaller sub-relay on the control board. Dedicated relays, also on the control board, control the vent fan and hood lights. I start troubleshooting by plugging the microwave into my dim bulb tester. This is simply a standard incandescent light bulb that is wired in series with a power outlet. The load is limited by the wattage of the light bulb. When I plug in the tester, the bulb glows brightly, indicating that there's a short somewhere in the circuit. Next, I open the door and the bulb goes dim that tells me that the short is somewhere after the door interlock. Also, the control board boots up, which is a good sign. I leave the door open and plug the microwave directly into the power. I try the vent fan and cooktop light and they work. Another good sign. Also, the oven lights are lit, which indicates that the sub relay is functional. Because the shorting problem disappears when the door is open, I suspect the problem is with the door switches or the magnetron power relay. Time to open the unit up. I disconnect the power and then remove the outer case. Next, I discharge the high voltage capacitor by shorting a wire between the two terminals. The capacitor can hold a charge for a very long time, and because this one's so big, it can really hurt you. The next step is to check the door switches. First, I start with the primary interlock, which is the top one. 
the switch is closed when the door is closed and opens when the door is open, just like it's supposed to. Next, I check the monitor switch, which is the middle switch. This switch is across the high voltage transformer. Since this transformer has a very low DC impedance, I disconnect one lead so I can measure the switch action. The switch closes when the door is open and opens when the door is closed, just like it's supposed to. However, while I'm testing this switch, I notice that I can operate the switch by just pulling down on the door slightly. This closes the monitor switch while leaving the primary and door sensing switches also closed. This would cause a short through the monitor switch. I need to investigate further. I remove the control panel and board to get better access to the switches and to test the magnetron power relay. The power relay is currently open just like it's supposed to be. I reconnect the control board to everything except the magnetron circuit. I hook my meter across the power relay and then plug the microwave into the dim bulb tester. The board powers up and the power relay shows an open circuit with both the door open and closed, just like it should. Next, I disconnect the power so I can check the door switches more carefully. Here I can definitely see that moving the door will close the monitor switch even though the door is closed. If the microwave is operating, the closed monitor switch will create a dead short across the high voltage transformer and will trip a breaker. This also puts a surge on the magnetron power relay, which could cause the relay to weld itself closed. To check out the switch, I remove the door switch assembly. I test each switch. The monitor switch opens when activated as designed. The door sense switch closes when activated also as designed. And the primary interlock switch closes when activated again as designed. The problem must be in the door alignment. I reinstall the switches and control board and lay the unit on its back. Just a slight movement of the door was enough to activate a switch. I'll remove the door and readjust the hinges slightly. I bend the hinges up a little bit since it looks like the door was lower than it should have been. After reinstalling the door, I was pleased to see that the switches didn't operate when I jiggled the door up and down. Before I buttoned up the microwave, I decided to test the primaries of the high voltage transformer. The schematic listed the DC impedance as 0.323 ohms. I connected my VTVM and verified that the transformer primaries were good. I reinstalled the cover and then hooked up the dim bulb tester. This time, the bulb remained dim regardless of whether the door was open or closed. With this information, I plugged the microwave directly into the line voltage and, with a cup of water in the microwave, I tested it for two seconds. Nothing blew, so I ran it for 45 seconds. I was happy to see that it heated the water nicely. Success! Thanks for joining me today. We repaired a microwave oven that was blowing its circuit breaker whenever it was plugged in. This was caused by an oven door misalignment that resulted in the interlock switches shorting out the high voltage transformer when the cooking cycle was interrupted by opening the door rather than using the stop button. As the manufacturer recommends, Always use the stop button to interrupt or end the cooking cycle. 
This prevents damage to the microwave as well as reducing the chance for any excess microwave leakage. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!